Nick Shaheen, how you doing here this morning? Uh, we got Joel is away this week, so just Brianna and myself on the show here with you. We're talking about Netflix Sweet. there. We're talking Sweet. about I... Netflix there. What were your thoughts on the Netflix breakout there yesterday? Oh, Netflix. Okay, I was looking at Buffalo Wild Wing while you guys were talking about it. it it's it's heading into some resistance territory. But anyway, Netflix. Um, I, you know, there's. It's one of those things where it's too high for me to jump on board and too hot to short. Not chasing. Um, it, it, and definitely not chasing. I am not one to chase. I'd rather miss the trades and catch them on the rebound if they ever rebound. This one doesn't look like it's going to ever rebound. But for the last couple of months, uh, since the mega three gap up <laughs> into the 575 area when we talked about it and we said it's it can go to a zillion basically it has traded in a, a an ascending tight channel which was like almost vertical and now it's had three pokes at the upper end of it and let's see how it handles it from here especially that yesterday somebody had the guts oh my gosh to speak badly about it i think it was einhorn <laughs> who was uh, that so... was einhorn saying something bad about it yeah didn't he say it's overvalued last night after the market closed i didn't hear that he you might yeah. be right though but anyway, verify it before you tweet it. But uh, it's uh, it, I'm not one to short it. I do see the potential. Um, I, I always argue for the fact that it's not a household number that we should be chasing. Everybody speaks of household because households have multiple accounts if they have kids in college or just m many people, and uh, just for the convenience and the fact it's so cheap. Um, it, it's um, it's not a household count, so the potential is there. And when something runs on fundamentals, I am not one to short it. Uh, I usually I like to short pops on GoPro and things like that based on some you know concept down the line that I just don't see ma manifesting itself. But this is not a concept; it's a working model here that they're trying to replicate outside of the U.S. And uh, regardless of how successful it is outside the U.S., it's going to have some success somewhere in the world. So uh, running on fundamentals is not something to be shorted. But at this level, I mean, would you put your money into it at this level? Would you would you risk your family's money on it? There are better deals out there. 400 to 700 in three months. I guess that's still the definition of chasing here. What about the Amazon breakout? Because this one's interesting because this has had a nice consolidation period for the last three months, basically consolidating the gains really from the last earnings report there. What are your thoughts here on Amazon as it breaks out to new all-time highs there yesterday? I want to see how it handles the next candle. Um, it has all the reasons to continue. It, the last poke up there at the 450 area failed on that big gap up on earnings, uh, last earnings. So uh, it, it seems like a legitimate breakout. And this is one of, uh, this is similar to Netflix in the sense they are making money. Whether they keep the money in their pockets or they spend it, they're still growing their top line. And if it's, it used to be the ultimate growth company because they were eating everybody's lunch, and but they're not hemorrhaging. So they're basically putting everything back into the company, which is what a growth company should do. And I never understood why people penal, you know, thought badly of it. They didn't penalize it. They gave it a pass until recently. So I, I do like it from the perspective. First of all, I love the service. They're very convenient. And I, I, I do like the fact that they are growing and they're seen as a growth company, and they haven't uh, stagnated into, like people see Google, for example, oh my gosh, it's a one-trick pony type of a deal, but they don't say that on Amazon, because their trick involves everybody else's lunch, and uh, so it, it, I like it from that perspective, but again, at that level, I, I'm patient, I'd wait for, if I wanted to go long it, I can't go long, I find better deals out there for my own personal money, for example. Okay, let's talk these better deals here, Nick. What is on the Nick Shaheen radar for this week? Well, <laughs> well let's talk about Apple, uh, for because you did mention it earlier. Yeah. And th there's a big blue elephant in the room, which is called 119.22. I think it was the low yet, uh, last week. That was yep. a gift. That was an absolute gift. I don't know what happened, but I don't think it's a coincidence that it happened during the week where there was uh, a China margin debacle going on. So I think it was a piggy bank where people ran into it in order to get cash, in order to cover disasters somewhere else. Um, it, that is my own personal feeling. I can't prove it one way or another. But when I saw the 119, I went long it with credit put spreads and bought debit call spreads with the money. And just nice. basically m minutes later, I got out of the risk of the credit put spreads. And that money that I made put me long the stock for free. So now I go into earnings with a lottery ticket that I didn't even pay for. So if you Can't like you talked, 
Yeah, exactly. You talked about watching a ticker and trading it with Coca-Cola, right? And this is exactly what I always say. Trade what you know. It doesn't mean what you know. Like, I, I don't own, I've never owned an Apple product, but I know the stock, I know the company, yeah. I know what's the value, I know what the market is lo looking to pay for it, but uh, I know that 119 was not natural in a second. Fine, the fundamentals could be changing, but not on a dime, and not everybody realizes at once to sell it down from 124 to 119. So that was an unusual behavior, and I took a shot on it. And if I can't risk on a stock that sells, what, 12 times? Um, that is as big a machine as Apple, then I have no business, business being in this business. So uh, so short term, yes, maybe the earnings will get hit for some reason. But long, mid to long term, I'm okay betting my money long on Apple. So if I choose a debit cost spread out in time, I'm fairly confident that I'm not going to lose everything in, in it. So that was a gift at 119 in my opinion. Speaking of earnings reports here, on Thursday we're going to get Google. And I know this is another one you watch every now and then. We really had yeah. a pop. Nice breakout there in Google there yesterday. It had found major support, and it was very well defined in the 540 area. We could count one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine lows from June and July in the 540 area. And yesterday we just blasted off, off that support two days ago, off the support, up to resistance, and through resistance there yesterday. Is the Google off to the races here ahead of the earnings report? What are your thoughts? And then and the second uh -huh. question is, Google has disappointed multiple times off their earnings reports. So are they going to disappoint again? Well, you could have said exactly what you just said heading into last time's earnings. And I can you count nine support to bounces. I count several resistance fails. Uh, so I think based on what I see, the easier path is down on Google, although I am not shorting it. But I usually, if you know, you know me, I don't like to play earnings with full money because the direct, the short-term direction, the reaction to the earnings is a complete coin flip. No one can foresee what the markets are going to react, how the markets are going to react. Even if you give us the P&Ls, you know that the company did well, but you don't know what the market is going to do with that information the next day. So I usually take small money, kind of a lottery ticket, and pick a direction on some stocks that I like. Google is one of them, and on this case, if you bend my arm backwards, I'll bet lower. Just and, and my guess is as good as anybody on your show today because it's just purely a guess. It's a coin flip on everybody's part. So uh, Because even the, the heads of the company don't know how the markets are going to perceive their own words and their own results. So it, it is a complete coin flip, therefore I don't put money. And if I do own the stock, I try to protect myself with some puts. And if I'm comfortable enough, I can sell covered calls to finance those puts and be basically protected for free at the cost of being called away if it runs up too high. Now, there are those who expect a 600 plus price on it based on the technical basis. And there is argument for it, especially if it adds another green candle here today. Um, so, yes, 600 plus is very feasible after the earnings, but also 500 ish is feasible so i think there there will be a move the direction of which is undetermined so make it flip a coin take a position and go for it gopro thoughts on this one barclays upgrading the stock here this morning raising their price target from 50 to 65 bucks stock is up a buck a buck 70 here in the pre-market catching a nice little bed what are your thoughts on gopro gpro well, finally, I think they made the, you know, when they ran it up to 90, uh, everybody chased it up to 90 a while back. Uh, the story was, oh, it's going to be its own channel. It's a YouTube killer, et cetera. And I think uh, just last week they made the, uh, kind of an official move towards that by hiring somebody specifically to produce content, if I understood the story correctly. So at least now the vaporware concept of them becoming a channel is becoming more real. And I really don't understand why people haven't bought the heck out of it this time around like last time around when they spent at least a couple of months buying it up. It's not like it popped in a day or two and then evaded. I mean, it went on for a long time. If I remember correctly, it went on from uh, like August and the high didn't come in until October, so two months. And here we are, it can't break uh, 55. And today's move would be interesting because the 55 area, although not a hard line in the sand, has been a pivot point. Uh, that was the point from really took off last time and then bounced on it a few times and then fell below it, and now it can't break above it consistently. It did have one poke into 60 uh, probably about a month ago. 
So it'll be interesting to see how it handles that line. If it can emphatically break it and break the recent high of about 60-ish, uh, then it has legs to go. But I'm not one to chase it. I really think it's a still a camera story. Um, plenty of people in that. I, you know, there are a couple of Sony cameras out there and things like that. So it's a cool camera. I, I, I have two. I don't think I'm going to run out and buy the tiny one that they just came out with. But it is a cool, captivating product. Nick, what yeah. do you use it for usually? Like, what are you are you doing extreme sports? Uh, I <laughs> <laughs> I used to race cars, but uh, I don't do oh, that as often extreme. anymore. But go karts, motorcycles, and things like that. It's pretty. Plus, if you go to the beach, it's something you can toss around on the sand and not worry about it. If you put it in the case. Gotcha. Because it's it's really waterproof that way from the case perspective. The camera itself that I have is not waterproof, but the case they provide is really waterproof. I bought several waterproof cameras, and as soon as you drop them in water, they go right. You know, they, they go crazy on you. Uh, but this one is the only one that actually lasts. So if you go to the beach, you drop in the pool, you put it in your pocket, you get to capture more moments that you wouldn't because you're so afraid to ruin your camera. Uh, so from that perspective, it. Pres it brings better pictures but it doesn't it's not a better camera because it doesn't have focus i'd rather have an slr with you know zoom and get a big big good picture but it provides more opportunities than with a regular camera at this point for me so that's what i use it for so more in the quality of the number of opportunities you have rather than the or more in the quantity of the number of opportunities you have rather than the quality of the pictures themselves Right, like okay. in the olden days when it was 35 millimeters, I mean, you're like, oh my, I can't take a picture here, it's going to cost me 20 cents to, you know, but now with the digital, you snap away and you just pick the best picture. What about Fitbit here? What are your thoughts on this one? <laughs> End of the quiet period, lots of analysts piping in there yesterday. Stock is up here. I was arguing just earlier this morning, not sure if you were listening, there'll be a little bit of a cup and handle form in here, digesting the gains from, if we look back to those days from June 30th and July 1st. And I wonder if this thing, you know, I'm not sure if I'm a fan of the fundamentals of the same, but technically here, if it got above 45, could be on a breakout. Oh, I, <laughs> yeah, that's. Uh, I did jump on it uh, one day. I chased uh, with lottery money. Uh, oh, you chased? I, I thought you don't chase. Oh, oh I don't Nick chase. does chase. I don't, I and chased, being a uh, race car uh, driver, wouldn't you have always yeah. been chasing a little bit? <laughs> I am chasing. No, I'm always in the lead. Uh, I'm always in the lead. Awesome. <laughs> I never see tailpipe. They're always behind me. Uh, the the uh, the Fitbit thing is uh, you got to take it on faith. I mean, it's, what it's got going for it is uh, the market's love for it. It reminds me of people loving Apple products, so, people loving GoPro products. You can't beat that. I mean, you can't buy that. And one day it was up. I was like, you know what? I'm just gonna jump in. And I, I didn't even think about it. I saw the ticker come across. I just bought some calls. The next day I sold them for a triple. So I was like, hey, sweet. Uh, that was a good deal. And uh, so I just. Um, the way I play it, I mean, there, there's cheap enough options out in time. So if you really believe in it, uh, why not buy a few calls out in time? They're pretty cheap. I mean, the return on in, when you play the options is so much more percentage-wise uh, than the actually buying the stock itself. The only downside is it's got a finite time. And if you're wrong before the time happens, then you lose your money as opposed to buying the stock. I mean, it's an asset in, in your hand. Um, and so, yeah, fit. Uh, it's got the market's love, and uh, that's all you can. Hope. That's a good base. As far as cup and handle, for me, it's just too young to look at it that way. Right, not enough history there. Okay, Nick, we got about a minute or two left here. Overall market thoughts, because obviously we had the big sell-off on the Greece concerns that they weren't going to get a deal done. Now that they it looks like they have a deal done here, is this market just continuing to grind higher here because ah. these Greece concerns are over, or will they find another reason to start? <laughs> You saying that it looks like they have a deal is what why the market is honey badger market these days. <laughs> they have too, too much faith that this deal is done. Uh, the deal was reached but not done. Uh, there are two major hurdles. I'm optimistic. I think people will do the right thing at this point. Uh, but uh, they cannot be happy with their leader in Greece uh, after what he did to them. And um, even though he did try his darndest, but he gambled with a country. Uh, he put them down on their knees and forced them to take a pretty much a bad deal, worse than they would have gotten in the first place. So um, I don't think it's a done deal yet, although the, the fact that Mark, yesterday the VIX was down 18% or whatever is 
too big of a drop. There's not that much relief that was given to us on Monday uh, from the news perspective. So I remain cautious. Uh, I remain tentatively shorting pops because they are still relief nature. Uh, there's nothing new fundamentally that tells me there's more upside from here than downside. There is room for upside, but not whoosh up. There's still a risk of dropping on bad news. So I can maintain a range-bound trade just like before uh, with support below and some resistance above. We found on the line with Nick Shaheen, he's an options expert as well as the author of Create Income with Options Spreads, and he joins us every Tuesday morning. Th Nick, thank you as always for coming on, sharing your insight with ourselves and our audience. We appreciate it, and we'll have you back next week. Thank you very much. Thanks, Nick.